Okay, so welcome back. Um, what we're going to do is is deal more with selectors and events in this movie. And if you haven't watched the last movie, please do so because it's real important. You're going to be lost if you're not familiar with jQuery up to this point. But in the last movie, what we did is we made it so each one of these links at the top of the web page here, when I clicked on one of these, we ran an alert function and we alerted the ID of what I clicked on. Okay, And so while that's a lot of fun, it's not particularly a real world example. And so let's do something that is. Let's say that when I click on each one of these links, I want the background of that link to turn yellow to indicate that it's been selected. So what we're going to do is use a jQuery function of adding a style or adding a class to a link. So what we're going to do here is first let's go over to the style sheet. Okay, so we're in the CSS and we got to create a, a, um, a style for that class. So what we're going to do is create a new class. It's going to be selected.selected. So that's the name of my class. And it's going to be real simple. We're just going to say background dash color and we'll just say yellow. Don't worry about a hex number right now. Okay, so what we need to do is say when that link is clicked on, the it's going to inherit this class of selected. The background will change to yellow. So let's go over to our scripts.js, and inside the set on load callback, first thing we need to do is use our selector. And you remember what we do for that is use a dollar sign parentheses, single quotes, and what we're going to do is say dot nav space a. So any a that falls in the the uh, div with the class dot nav. Okay, so that's the selector, and we need to bind that with an event. So let's say dot click. And remember, events have parentheses like functions. And we're going to put a semicolon afterwards. Okay? So that's what we have so far. We've set it up. So now what happens when we click? We need to put that in here. Remember, that's going to be a function. And remember, pay attention when you get in here and make sure you don't have syntax errors because it gets confusing. We're going to write the word function. And remember, functions have open, close parentheses and then open, close curly braces. Okay, so make sure you've got all that. In between the two curly braces, you can drop a line, and that's kind of how I keep things clean here. And we're going to write what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another selector. And this time I'm going to use dollar sign, open parentheses, and then I'm going to write the word this. And I'll explain that in a second. Okay, and so I'm going to say this dot add class with a capital C. Make sure it's a capital C. If you have a lowercase c, it won't call correctly. And what we're going to do is say open parentheses, and then in single quotes, I'm going to say selected. No dot. Okay? And then we're going to use a semicolon to terminate that. Now, what have we done? We've said when any link or any A inside the div with the um, class of nav, when that's clicked on, this is going to run. And we're going to use the word this. Notice that this does not have single quotes around it because it is not a class, it's not an, uh, an element of the HTML. What is this? Well, this is what's been clicked. Okay, so it says basically perform this on itself. Okay, and I know that's a little confusing, but anytime one of these is clicked on, what is clicked on, in other words, this, is going to add the class of selected. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go over and see how the page runs. And so let's reload. And you know, now you can see that anytime I click on one of these, the background turns yellow. It does exactly what I asked it to do. The problem is, is that it stays yellow when I click on the next one. So what we need to do is add something else in here to turn them off. And what we're going to do is use another Java, or excuse me, jQuery function. I'm going to put it first. I'm going to say um, we're going to use a selector and we're going to use the remove class function. So what we're going to do is we're going to say dollar sign and then what I'm going to say is anything in here. So dot, uh, let's see, in, print, in single quotes, dot nav space a. And then we're going to say dot remove class and then we're going to say selected. Now what this is going to do is, is two things. Now when we click on any link, it's going to go through all of the links and remove the class if it's there. If it's not there, then it won't, you know, it'll just fail, it won't do anything. Once it's done with that, it's going to, on this, meaning what's been clicked on, it's going to add that class. Okay, so that's basically, I had to add that remove and it's going to do it unilaterally you know, across the board. So let's go back over, refresh, and now you can see when I click the next one, it removes the class on the first one. So this is a, it requires two functions to do, but it's very easy to do. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, very useful. Um, so really what's interesting about this is we've, I've dealt with our selector and we've dealt with our event and then we've put some functions in here, the remove class and the add class. I can do this for anything. I could, uh, let's do another one. Let's say dollar sign and then in quotes P. So any paragraph that's clicked on, uh, excuse me, click, not clicked. I can't talk and write today. And click. And then what we're going to do is say function. And then open, close parentheses, close parentheses, open, curly brace, close curly brace. Let's drop return. And I need to add a semicolon down there. Now I'm going to say uh, this. 
dot add class selected and now what we've done is we've added this to a paragraph when it's clicked on so these don't have to happen on links refresh and now when I click on a paragraph we can highlight paragraphs okay so that could be useful somewhere um, certainly it doesn't have to be a link but remember if you want to be able to deselect it you need to run something else to remove that class so that's basically what we've done is we've learned how to add classes and remove classes and remember we've dealt with selectors which is what what we're targeting and then we need to bind an event so this is the click event and then inside the click event we run the function and that's where we can simply use once again selectors and then we can run functions off the uh, jQuery library to do that so anyway uh, we'll continue on in the next movie